beautiful day. Uh, I'll take uh, half a dozen apples and, uh, and a dozen oranges. And, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And, and could you uh, uh, stick one of those waters in there for me? Thank you. Perfect. Well, that'll do it. Got here. Unconscious male who was involved in the shooting in his mid 30s. Six bullet holes, interior chest walk one, two, three, over. Let's get him to ER for us, Dad. Get him to ER for us, Dad. No! But Dr. Foreman is our primary trauma unit. He's got at least four bullets in him. Where'd you get your MD, nurse? Bring him to lab six. There's no time to lock. Put out, medic. He's unconscious. Doctor's lost too much blood. <laughs> you really ought to know better than to come between a thief and his gun. Nurse, we need more drips. I don't want to hear it, just do it. Okay, let's get him in the chamber. Get the oxygen ready. Come on, Jay, keep with us. Welcome to the deoxier chamber. I am Dexter, your co-pilot. What's his BPM? It's low, 130. Please. Type and copy match 10 units. Another 10 units of blood. That patient should be in the trauma unit. This is a... I know where I'm at, Saul. I don't have time for this crap. The chamber is not ready. It's never been tested on human tissue. For all intents and purposes, Anders is already dead. Jake? Yes, Jake. He's got severe liver and kidney damage. And he's almost into VFIP. This is Jake's project. He hasn't finished testing yet. He has. I put the hold on. Diagnostics. He must have had a reason. I have my doubts. But for his sake, I hope he did his homework. Internal organ damage, liver puncture, skeletal rib cage damage. Please proceed with DNA George, input. Back, I've got it. It's right by the cage. Four minutes. Damn the Diagnosis machine. foreign matter to human structure. Bullet Wait, has the disc been formatted for the link? All. Please insert patient. Jake had his entire system scanned two weeks ago. Thank God. What is it? It's Jake's DNA. Initiating DNA. It's complete DNA? Exactly. It's a virtual blueprint of his healthy system. Oh, man. What's going on? He's going into VFib. Hang on, Jake. Well, what can I do? Sit down and shut up! Thank you, Dr. Foreman. Hang on. Please select molecular command to initiate Dr. Anders' restructuring. I, G, 6, R, E. Thank you, Dr. Foreman. Sequence initiated. One moment to recognize code series. Recognize and accept it. Deoxier chamber in activation. Please enter oxygen pressure count. Program preparing to match Dr. Anders' disc information. Reading DNA disc, please seal chamber and step away from the vehicle. Beginning replacement from disc information. Replace and repair damaged internal organs. Interfacing on the graph. Plasma chamber reads positive. Let's get ready to back it out and release the plasma burst. Stand by. Output steady. Now. Rib gauge normal. Kidney normal. Plasma line shut off. Look at this. 
We have transmutation. Now, for minor instabilities. Please begin program shutdown. Congratulations, Dr. Foreman. out of here before I quit being a gentleman. Okay, thanks. Get me channel eight. I'm Michael O'Byrne reporting live from MedTech Hospital where research scientist Dr. Jake Anders is being hailed as a latter-day Louis Pasteur. His top secret project, the deoxer chamber, hidden behind the doors of lab six, has been put to the ultimate test. Channel eight news has obtained this diagram of the deoxer chamber technology developed by Dr. Anders that can actually take a wounded victim, restructure the destroyed tissue or organs, and reverse the damage. Little did Anders know he would be the first human to use it. A few hours ago, Dr. Anders was rushed to MedTech after getting caught in the crossfire of a downtown Minimart robbery. He was shot four times by an unidentified suspect still at large. Despite suffering what were described as near-fatal injuries, he was later released from hospital in reportedly perfect condition after undergoing treatment in the miraculous deoxer chamber. Dr. Get me General Pearson, DOD, ASAP. Concentrated on the equations of mass, energy, and relativity. Dr. Moments ago, we caught up with Dr. Rebecca Foreman, an associate of Dr. Anders. Well, what can you tell us about Dr. Anders? Dr. Foreman, Dr. Foreman, just a minute of your time. What can you tell us about Dr. Anders? Dr. Foreman, Dr. Foreman, please, please. I'm Michael O'Byrne, reporting from the site of the miracle machine that may one day make illness and injury a thing of the past. Hey, don't you give me none of that hey, hey crap, Dr. Anders. You think I'm in school with you or something? Can you believe that? They're turning this into a media circus for crying out loud. Look, put your little melon head down on that pillow. I mean, now. What, what was your name, Sarge? My name is Nurse Ruth, soldier boy. Well, relax, Ruth. You're not my mother. Well, Doc, if you could only see, you know that's right. Stop playing with those bandages, eh? Or slap you upside your head the next time you try that. Dr. Foreman gave me strict orders in regards to you, you know. But I'm in the dark here, Ruth. Well, you will be for a long time if you don't stop your fidgeting. You've been exposed to the full spectrum of UV light, you know. You gotta rest your eyeballs, darling. Temporary optic neuritis. And it's Dr. Anders, please. Well, last time I looked in the mirror, it was Nurse Ruth. Anyhow, I think I heard the teapot whistling. I'll be back, but don't let me catch you out of that bed, you understand me? I can't believe you watching TV with your eyes bandaged up and everything like that. <laughs> Are you Ruth? Mm. Oh, dear. You, you, you startled me. You must be Mrs. A. You're even prettier than your picture, I must say. Is he awake? Oh, well, after about two days in Never Never Land. Well, I can take over now. Well, I can't let you do that, Mrs. A. It's my job. Please, I want to be here for him. He does know his med schedule, that's true. But it's up to you to keep him honest, you know. I will. Well, I'll pack away this tea and I'll let myself out the back door. Okay? Okay. All right, Mrs. A. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Come on, Ruth, don't hover. I know you're there, I can hear you breathing. You know how when things get tense, I rearrange the furniture? Well, things got real tense and they rearranged you. Jen. It's nice to hear you smile. It's good to see you here. I haven't seen you in six months. You still can't. What are you doing here? Things change, Jakey. People change. Sometimes 
People almost die. Someone you still love. It makes you stop and think. I didn't think you'd come. I figured... <laughs> I figured seeing that deoxer chamber put me back together like Humpty Dumpty would stir up your whole moral ethical dilemma again. Don't start up with that again. I feel the way I feel. Just because you're alive, the end doesn't justify the means. Oh, come on. You, you, know, you accuse me of playing God when you're the one, in fact, making all the supreme judgments, aren't you? Being a scientist doesn't exclude you from being human. I have a right to my beliefs. Here we go again. There is something inherently repugnant about mankind artificially taking apart DNA molecules and rearranging them on a whim. I am not alive because of a whim, Jen. Just because something can be done doesn't mean something should be done. Jake, I didn't come here to fight. Separated or not, I am your wife and I do still love you. Right. A wife without a ring. My wedding band has been on my finger since the day we were married and you damn well know it. Oh, come on, Jen. You think I'm that stupid? Wrong question, Jake. Yes, I do. Uh, amazing. Just amazing. I don't know, Saul. I've been checking the whole thing over for flaws, and I just can't find any. His heart is fine. It's not traumatized. The kidney, the liver. Look at his rib cage. It was totally shattered. And now you can't even see any fracture lines. His deoxer chamber really works? You're right. But it makes me so nervous. There could be a flaw that we just haven't detected yet. We could be walking through a minefield here. Look at that liver. There's not even a dent. What is it? His heart's on the opposite side. You're right. Could that chamber have actually altered his structure? Dr. Rubeck, I believe it may be my fault. I may have flipped over the film when I loaded it. I guess I should have checked the encoding. I guess you should have, nurse. There we go. It's all fixed. No fuss, no muss, no blood. Hello? another cool tune keeping in spirit with his bizarre cold snap in the middle of july so turn up the volume along with the thermostat we'll have the full weekend forecast after this come on max want to go outside buddy
first. What's going on here? If you don't cooperate, I'll find me another lackey to get me in my chamber. Uh, l let's clarify something, Senator. Uh, the, the chamber belongs to the medical center, not the United States government. Senator, I don't mean to be rude, but I have a board meeting to attend. Think of this as an oil well proposition. Where I come from, when a man hits it rich, we call it an oil well, a real gusher. You know what I mean? Let's get down to brass tacks. Now, about this machine of ours. Ours? Fine, yours for now. This contraption, you can put a wounded man in it and actually fix him up. Well, that's a simplistic way of putting it. Scientifically. Scientifically, my ass. You know what this could do for the military? We could take the wounded off the battlefield, put them in one of these contraptions, fix them up, send them right back out on the field. It's good as new. Hell, we'd have self replenishing troops. Senator, that is without a doubt the most morally perverse argument I have ever heard. So how much cash do you need to retire in style, Sal? Will you get out of my office before I call security? Let's just quit screwing around here. How about uh, half a million? Your own wing of a hospital. Uh, Sylvia, call security. I am a United States Senator. This is Canada. You're out of your jurisdiction. They panicked. It's a natural reflex. Left. I'm not imagining it, Beck. I mean, everything seems as if it's backwards. Disorientation is to be expected. Just give yourself some time. Wake up to three feet of snow in the middle of summer. Everyone is baffled. But right now, let's just concentrate on you, okay? You know, I'll go crazy if I have to live my life in a mirror. You remove the bandages prematurely. Your whole vision could be transversed, or it could be optic neuritis. If the chamber did somehow affect the optic nerve, maybe it's irreversible. I mean, God forbid, but it could be a permanent anastrophe. Oh no, anastrophe, catastrophe. I'm glad you're amused. Aren't you dyslexic anyway? <laughs> yeah, so what, so I should consider it a blessing in disguise? No, but if the condition is permanent, perhaps you can relearn faster. Oh, that's amazing. You had a hole the size of a Buick right here, and now there's no scar, there's nothing. It's like it never happened. Trust me, it happened. Jake, do you realize what we've got here? You've changed the whole course of medical history. Science will never be the same. Back. I just, this vision thing, it bugs me. I mean, I, and you know one thing for sure, the medical community is not going to welcome this with open arms. <sighs> Gotta keep writing those prescriptions. Thanks. For what? Taking a chance. I'm trying the chamber for saving my life. Well, you would have done the same thing for me, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Let us try again, Dr. Anders. That connection does not represent a productive scientific decision. Your time with me today is futile. My artificial intelligence has come to a conclusion. Hi. I think you need a vacation. Uh, wasn't expecting any company. Still messing around with that thing? Yeah. Guess it'd be up and running if all of my notes weren't backwards. It must be strange seeing everything in reverse. Oh, you know me. I never could uh, tell my right from my left. Especially on the dance floor. <laughs> you remember that night in Montreal? Yeah. I still have scars on my feet from it. <laughs> you never could leave, could you? You wanted Gene Kelly. You should have married him. But I didn't want Gene Kelly, I wanted you. Jake, um, 
About yesterday. Oh, you don't... Don't say anything, I... You look nice. Nice dress. Nice shoes. <laughs> What's that? It's a story about a guy who ends up in a place where everything is backwards. If you'd like, I could read it to you. Yeah, that'd be nice. And tomorrow we can start right into finger painting, huh? <laughs> I'll bring you milk and cookies. Thanks. Do you have me that uh, ribbon cable, please? No. Uh, the other ribbon cable. There you go. Thank you. I've been doing a lot of soul searching lately. It's all right. Say anything. Being separated all this time hasn't been easy. Getting separated wasn't my idea. I don't... I don't know if everything I said to you back then was fair. Look, I... I had a difficult time dealing with your passion for the project. Now you wouldn't be here without it. Maybe I've been a little obsessive. I'm sorry, I shouted. Look at it this way. At least we hadn't had an argument in over six months until yesterday. Yeah, but we haven't seen each other or talked in six months. <laughs> oh, yeah. I guess that has something to do with it. I made my lasagna last night. I love your lasagna. <laughs> I know. I almost brought you some. Maybe I could get a bottle of Chianti and maybe... I'd love to, but I have a dance class. But I'm... I'll take a rain check. You bet. Thanks for stopping by. Now here's JJ with the weather forecast. And Jay, what the heck is going on out there? Hope you kept those parkas and snow shovels handy because we're in for another freaky winter storm. If we take a look at our July weather map, you can see we've got this front coming down from the north. It's sweeping right across the country and throughout the world. Thanks a lot, JJ. And as a result of this odd, bizarre weather we've been having, the Tulip Festival has been canceled. Another odd sight, hockey in the middle of summer. Somebody turn the heat on in here, I'm freezing. Yeah, we're all feeling a little bit chilled. It's like hell's freezing over. Oh, Mother Nature must be pissed about something. Hang on a second, Ace. Let me just run one more scan. Are we done here or what? What is it? Jake, it's not your 
vision that screwed up. It's the rest of you. I remember we used to sit outside for hours, staring up at the moon. You proposed to me under the stars. Yeah. Well, you know, people do strange things when there's a full moon. <laughs> Have you missed me, Jakey? I missed you a lot, Jenny. <laughs> I missed you, too. <laughs> I think you're a little brat. Ow! What? What? My knee. What? what? My knee. My knee. We were biking through the parkway and I wiped out my knee. I mean, come on, you know that for crying out loud. Honey, that was your other knee. What are you talking about? I lived with you for six years. I know it was your other knee. I'm telling you, it's this knee. This is the one that hurts. It's my knee. I know when it hurts. It hurts. Jen, I'm, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm going left, and then the whole world is going right. I won't go left with you. Exciting time for you, eh? Is that smile permanent? Next. No, no, not you. This, this is an honor. I loved your book. That's what they all say. Thanks. Oh, sorry, I, uh, my fault. Thank you, Mr. O'Keefe. Uh, you, you know, when I look in the mirror and I, I see myself looking at myself, I, I wonder, Who's looking at me? That's a pretty scary thought, pal. C could you sign that from a friend? We're not friends yet. Uh, excuse me? Pardon me? Mr. O'Keefe? My, uh, my name, by the way, is, uh, Jake Anders. Dr. Jake Anders. I'm a physicist. This must be a real thrill, Jack. <laughs> I, uh, really enjoyed your book. This damn, damn, damn man. Next. Thank you. A rubber stamp. How very thoughtful. Thank you. Did you pay for that? Uh, Mr. O'Keefe, just, just a few minutes of your time, please. I, I, I need to talk to you about your book. All right. Who's the smart ass that screwed with my mirror? Not me. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a physicist, you see. I, I work at MedTech. Look. Why don't you just go home and play, split some atoms or whatever it is you fellas do? I thought perhaps you'd like to go to the cafe, sit down, and we could talk. Just what isn't clear to you, pal. I'm tired. I'm cold. I'm going home. Go for out somewhere. I... I have a couple of questions about Hasta your... Hasta la vista, pal! Oh, here. 
No, I could do it. I could do it. That's very nice. Thank you. I can't see if you're in front of me. Thank you. Have you kids heard about Alice in the Looking Glass? Now you know, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with this little happy face guy right here. <laughs> and actually I have a piece of Alice's Looking Glass. Now did you know they can actually look right through a mirror? And what we do is we're just gonna clean it off just like this, you see? And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take the cloth and I'm gonna put it right through the mirror, just like that. So you see it actually goes right through the mirror. I want you to watch very carefully because what I'm gonna do is pull it through like this. Watch. Just like that. Mikey. And the mirror is solid again. And I'm gonna place the hanky down into my hand, just like this. Now you see, it's not going up my sleeve, but it's going down into my hand. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rub on the back of my hand, make a magic pass, and you see what happens is the hanky disappears just like that. It's ridiculous. It's science fiction crap. Come on, Jake, the guy's a damn novelist. He, he works with a typewriter, not medical data. This guy has fallen through a crack in the time-space continuum. He's found a passageway to a mirror world, I'm certain of it. It's science fiction, Jake. Stupid science fiction. If you think about it, all things in the universe need balance. That's the way Mother Nature works, right? There are two of everything. There are two suns, there are two moons, there are two identical people. For every action, a reaction. How lyrical. Look around you. Life is happening all around you spontaneously. Right? All around. Every action, everything that you see, every movement, mirrored exactly on the other side. Come here, look. Here, I'll trade you. Jake, are you all right? I'm fine. I'm fine. I used to be here. Now I'm here. the oxygen chamber, we have learned that Dr. Andrews' creation has had some adverse side effects. Apparently, there are some flaws in the miracle life machine. We tracked down Jennifer Anders at the Citadel Hotel. We understand you're the estranged wife of Dr. Jake Anders. What can you tell us about the deoxy chamber? I'm sorry. What do you know about the infamous Lab 6? I'd imagine it's somewhere between Lab 5 and 7. Well, can it really create life from death? Look, we know your husband was almost dead. Come on, Mr. Brick. Give us a... What about the side effects? What about the side effects? Tell us. Another update on the Anders story. Police have a possible lead on the suspect involved in the Mini Mark shooting. Dr. Anders was an innocent bystander when the robbery occurred. The suspect, who is still at large, is considered to be armed and dangerous. We'll continue to bring you updated information on the miraculous story of Dr. Jake Anders. Is it his chamber of life or his chamber of horror? Sal, my good friend, come on in. I have people waiting for me. They can damn well wait. We got problems. There is no we. There is no deal. Do you know who my buyer is? That nothing's for sale. Everything's for sale. Let me out of here. Patient Sal, good things come to those who wait. I can't divulge any names, but my buyer's throwing the mother of all temper tantrums. You're insane. I can't let this technology out to some satanical dictator, especially with your grotesque agenda, recycling human soldiers. Is that your final position? That's always been my position. You met that pretty little wife of yours. It'd be a shame for him to find you upside down in a trash can leaking like a midget after a 12-pack of brew. Now, let's keep real hush-hush about this, huh, Sal? Get him out of here! You've got to be kidding. I missed your scintillating conversation. Saw you on TV. What's next? Milk cartons? <laughs> oh, no. I'm lactose intolerant. So you know what scrambled eggs look like? Yeah. Yeah. Bacon and hash browns are waiting in the car. You should see what they look like. Yeah, and it's a warm, balmy night. Come on inside. Thank you. I 
I see you do your own interior decorating as well, eh? <laughs> Maid ran off with a butler, dish ran away with a spoon. Good help is hard to find. What do you want? You didn't trudge all the way out here to indulge in small talk. It's about your book, Alex. May I call you Alex? Do us both a favor. Cut to the chase. What got you so interested in the concept of parallel dimensions? It's a living. Yeah, if you only knew. It's nothing more than the imagination of a novelist running wild. And yet it's helped make me a relatively, relatively wealthy man. And that's it. I'm sorry. I don't have a more important revelation for you. I'm paid the big bucks for writing pseudoscience bullshit with a healthy dose of intermiracular uh, violence and fornication. It's what sells books. I think there's a physicist behind that writer's facade. I'm a good writer. What can I say? There's some very sound scientific theories behind that sci-fi babble, you know. It's a gift. Do you believe in a parallel universe? Why? Because if there is any truth to those theories of yours and I, I believe there is, then I'm the first to go through that threshold. Forgive me, Doctor. I have a publishing deadline to meet. You fucked up. You were supposed to take Anders out. He should be six feet under. I pay for services rendered. You didn't tell me about that stupid chamber thing. You owe me. <laughs> I owe you nothing. In fact, due to the controversial nature of this operation, you being a senator and all Don't cross that line, son. <laughs> You've crossed that line, Senator. Word of this gets out, it's gonna make chemical warfare look like little old Tiddlywinks now, wouldn't you say? Just what are you asking for? Nothing much. Crumbs. A monthly kickback. Chump change for a gig as big as this. My ass. Hey, think of it as buying security on an installment plan. You don't leave home without me. <laughs> I said I pay for services rendered. Do you understand? Yeah. You get the rest of your money when the job is done. Caprende? Yeah. Get out of here. Hey, Max.
One more time. Recalling information, Dr. Jake Anders, an anatomy stabilization. Code no, I've checked it and it's running within the normal parameters. Negative. Do you think my arrest could have somehow caused the program to change automatically? Please. Uh, offhand, I wouldn't think so, but we can check it out. Dr. Jake Anders, an anatomy That's That's no wonder. You sure that the plasma wasn't overdosed during the interface, right? No, we infused it with only the prescribed amount. Let us try again, shall we? All right, let's random run the initial sequence one more time, please. Okay. Random code incomplete. Accessing. Program will choose. Random Hold completion. It. What is that? Please select, select molecular, molecular command. command. Please select molecular command. Where the hell did that sequence come from? Alternate, Alternate on. on. Alternate on. An this is impossible. Disassembled. Somebody would have to have our access codes. Assembled. Let's save Program that does not immediately recognize this entry code to original input. We slave over this system for six years, exacting details, perfect planning, and then the monkey wrench turns out to be some random factor. Please select molecular command. That sequence caused the breach. Anatomy disassembled. It caused my entire molecular structure to be reassembled in a mirror world. Anatomy reassembled. Okay, your anatomy was inverted by this mess. But I can't buy into this mirror world nonsense. Program does not immediately you know, recognize this entry the book says that Da Vinci used to write all of his notes backwards, that only he could read them. Please enter random access. I wonder if he didn't find a way to cross over. Incorrect. Please yeah. try again, doctor. My anatomy hasn't been inverted. I've, I've just sort of, I've traded places with myself. Please select. Da Vinci was and dyslexic. This book isn't science fiction. This guy knows exactly what he's talking about. Uh, hello? Doc. Yeah? This is uh, Jake Anders. It's A-OK. -okay. Alex O'Keefe. Oh! Oh, Alex! Alex! Look, I, I need to talk to you. Uh, okay. Look, I'll meet you at Center Point behind Parliament Hill, 3 o'clock. Program All right. does not immediately recognize this entry code. Anatomy disassembled. Anatomy reassembled. So you're telling me that I'm the cause of all this? Of of winter and summer? <laughs> you heard right. Look, Doc. Have you ever played out the string of theoretical ramifications of parallel worlds? No, no one I haven't. So you guys didn't know you were piecing together a bi-universal 747. No, no, we, we built the chamber mainly to, to restructure tissue and organs, that's all. I thought you only write science fiction albums. I lied. I'm a scientist too, want to swap beakers? So, uh, you're, you're saying that I somehow managed to travel from one plane of existence to another through the chamber? may have caused radical imbalance, throwing the molecular structure of both worlds into total chaos. Think of it in these terms. If, in the grand scheme of things, you were destined to go one particular direction at one particular moment in time, but instead, at that exact moment, you go exactly the opposite direction. Hypothetically, that could cause an energy wave that could have reversed the gravitational pull of the universe creating an imbalance, a disruption of molecules, a rupture in the fabric of space and time, thus causing Mother Nature to dump winter in the middle of summer. Who knows what'll happen next? My God. A yin without a yang. Or to put in more scientific terms, have we created a fatal paradox? We? I mean you. 
you created a fatal paradox. Alex, I heard you. You said we. Well, I won't bore you with my life story. But you weren't the first to come on down. <laughs> but you're from the other world. First. Did you build the chamber too, Alex? Nothing so heroic. Just a small, maybe cubic meter, pool of ionic charged particles. Yet that tiny pool became a portal to the other side. I began to send inanimate objects through the portal. Little insignificant things. Nothing that could change the predestined pattern of life in either world. Until one day I slipped through myself. So it's true then. I'm not reversed. The world is, right? The world is. <laughs> Just go grab a bite. No, oh, I'm, I'm not tired. I, uh... Uh, yeah? uh, I mean, I'm. Um, Vic. Jen and I are. Uh, we're gonna try to work things out. Jeez, that's. That's great, Jake. Uh, God, I'm really happy for you, you know? I mean. No! No! Yeah. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm uh, oh, really. This is what you should do, okay? It's... What is this? <laughs> do women usually break down in your arms? You've got a, a happy face ready for them. <laughs> Mr. O'Keefe? It's been a hell of a day. You'd be doing me a favor. Who the hell are you? Would you put that arrow down, Robin Hood? It'd be one pretty wall trophy. I let this thing go. I'm Dr. Rebecca Foreman. I thought doctors didn't make house calls anymore. I work with Jake Anders. Which dimension are you from? Would you put that thing down, please? Thanks. Oh! What are you, not? You've actually got Jake believing he's in some other universe. Have you read a single word I've written? That's what I thought. The premise of my novel is reality. It's just pretending to be fiction. It must be warm and bouncy. What? Your rubber room? The one you live in? Go ahead, mark away, but there really are two parallel planes of existence that operate in juxtaposition to one another. Jake's done this. I don't buy it. It's connected to this freaky weather. Who knows what's gonna happen next? The whole concept is outrageous. Fine, so you're a skeptic. I've been fighting skeptics for the last eight years. Thrice your size, lady. Or a pussycat. With claws. So you wrote a best-selling novel. So, big deal, hmm? Huh? First, we've got to find out what went wrong. What's this wee crap? You wanted to talk to me about my theoretical musings. I don't participate anymore. I just write. Fine. Be a wimp. Call it as you see it, lady.
Evening, gentlemen. You'll have to use the front gate. We're delivering medical supplies. You'll have to get clearance out front. This is for emergencies only. <laughs> How does this happen? I mean, we have all the security in the world in this place. This, this, this is an industrial espionage. I mean, they, they, they can't be thinking they're gonna clone this thing, can they? I mean, well, what the hell are they thinking about? Of course not. This isn't mainstream technology. If something came out that was a duplicate to the chamber, it would be way too obvious. Look, Beck, we're not talking about some street thugs fencing stereo equipment here, okay? No shit, Sherlock. You should have majored in criminology. I'm just trying to figure this out here, okay? I mean, you're not exactly dazzling me with any breakthroughs yourself, Mrs. Holmes. You want to pick a fight? Go for it! Yes! Yes! Damn it, Barbara! Wait a minute, fight! This is a disaster! So they've taken my chamber. Now, who would do that? Uh, this, this isn't our job. That's why the police were here. The police? What can the police do? This is level one security. We don't want the police in this all. We want to handle this in-house, this thing. I want you to let the authorities handle this. That's out of the question, so. You think I'm gonna sit around and wait for the police? It looks like we've got a visitor. Well, sir, you're a little <laughs> late. We've given everything away. Somehow I thought Lab 6 would have some more equipment in it, you know? Computers, extension cords, channel flipper, maybe some lights, kind of blink. What are you doing here? I was shopping around for an electronic coffin and I caught your ad on TV, eh? Who is this man? He's an author, Alex O'Keefe. I'd uh, shake your hand, doctor, but uh... He's all right, fellas, you can take those off. M maybe we shouldn't let... So who's this guy? Alex, this is our administrator, Dr. Saul Rubeck. So you're the guy they call the old bastard. Huh. I made that up. <laughs> nice to see you again outside the uh, boxing ring. So you two have met on the battlefield. So who could have done this? I'd uh, tell her what she wants. She does this thing with the right hook. I have an idea who might have engineered this, but it's only an idea. Let's hear it, Saul. Uh, I, I had a couple of involuntary conversations with a US senator. Uh, uh, um, Lockhart. 
So, you and I, we're gonna go and you're gonna tell me all about this senator, all right? Yeah, me, yeah, me too. You know, I'm not at all impressed by this facility. Yeah? Hey, Alex, it's Rebecca. I've got an assignment for you. Do I have a choice? I didn't think so. weather is just incredible. I can't explain it to you. Uh, it's nothing that city council approved. It's this just is a, the middle of July. This is a strange, <laughs> strange day. However, this is a beautiful city. And oh, it's uh, a lovely when city. you look around, you see the war memorial over there. The American embassy is there. And just take a look. Everywhere, when you see the uh, Peace Tower, you know that you're in Ottawa, the capital city of Canada. Next time, we'll do tea together. And beaver tails. I'll buy beaver tails. <laughs> sure. Count me in. Nice to see you. Nice to see Wonderful you. To meet you. Yes. You. Senator Lockholt? Do I know you? Heard you were in town. Saw you on the news. What's on your mind? I'm Jake Anders. Dr. Jake Anders. Ring any bells? Should it? I believe you have something that belongs to me. What I've got is an office and an assistant. Use them. Let me give you a quick tour. You're not invited. Well, that's all right, sir. It's, it's free. Over here, we have the Chateau Laurier just behind there, and across the way, there's the Rideau Canal. It becomes the largest ice skating rink in wintertime. Hey, enough of this crap. All right, sir. If you want to play hardball, I can play hardball. I bet you Max Keeping down at the Channel 8 News would love to hear your plans for my deoxer chamber. Oh, you're that boy over at MedTech and invented that contraption. That's right. And we both know it's not over at MedTech anymore, don't we? Well, I don't know any such thing. Humor me, Senator. I know you stole the chamber. I want it back. You can't come up here and push us around just because you have some agenda to fulfill. I won't let you get away with it. You know, I respect directness in a man, even though he is fantasizing. All I know is what I've seen on television. What would I want with that kind of contraption? I've heard about your plans for my chamber, Senator. Tour is over. That chamber was meant to perpetuate the human race, to extend life, not to, not to create unkillable armies, pitting soldiers against soldiers in war after war, always suffering, never dying. No, sir, you are a sick man. Son, I am terribly sorry about your little device, and I do hope you find it. Oh, I will. You count on it. It's on it'll it just be another couple of minutes. You must have looked like some crazy war correspondent just wildly snapping away in the middle of the battlefield. It's you, damn it. You make me do these stupid things. Is that so horrible? When I'm around you, I do not so stuff. Ridiculous things. Dumb. I would never ever do these things. And I have a feeling I could do more of them. Uh, I can't make it out. Can you enlarge it? I'm afraid that's as big as it gets. Well, anyway, that looks like that Senator Lockholt. But who's this guy? That's an ambassador. How do you know? I've seen them on TV. We know they're doing a deal. We just don't know where. Or when.
I'm glad you could make it. I've been doing some thinking, Alex. I've been known to do that from time to time. You know, I'm, I'm used to reading backwards, right? And I'm used to left being right and right being left. So what difference does it make to anybody if I stay or go back? The world's existence, as we know it. I think you need a drink, Alex. Thanks, right? You gotta go back. Come on, Alex. I mean, come on. What is this? That that paradox you're talking about? That that, that, that everything is referred. No, come on. In a manner of speaking, your crossing over has created a conflict of sorts. You've got to leave this mirror world. So where's the proof that that I somehow screwed up the space-time continuum? How do you know? Snowman in July would be a good start. I've documented your life story. The Earth has reversed its rotation. We're heading towards the Ice Age, man. Ever since that chamber sent you through. Okay, okay, well, then I could find the chamber. I could invert the program. And I'll just go back, no big deal. You won't exist on the other side. You're dead back there. Your body's riddled with bullets. The wounds are fatal. Remember? Sign. Tonight. Here we go. <laughs> Looks great. I hope I cooked it enough. Looks very good. It's nice to have you home. You've always had a ferocious appetite. Is that enough? Yeah. Okay. Perfect. What is it, Jake? What? Come on, I know you. It's amazing to me you forget we were married. We were inseparable. When I find the chamber, I'm going back in, Jen. You're testing me, right? Oh, please. Look, my world is all turned around. I'm living in a mirror world, and the only way to fix that is to go back into the chamber. If I don't go back, the consequences are going to be disastrous. Who's putting these crazy thoughts in your head? I am not doing this for myself, Jen. You go back in there, you'll die. Is that what you want? It's that God complex of yours. You beat death once. You're playing Russian roulette with that damn chamber. struggle, the more it's going to hurt now. Settle down. What do we got here? Jennifer Tracy Anders. Name's as pretty as a girl. <laughs> Organ donor, how appropriate. I mentioned I uh, met your husband. We went sightseeing. Where are my manners? I failed to introduce myself. I'm Senator James Lockhart. At your service, ma'am. 
My boys here, they're novices at running your husband's newfangled machine. We best test it out before we show it off. And you have just volunteered to be my guinea pig. Scalpel? After all, we gotta make sure it does what it's supposed to. We put an A wire where a B wire's supposed to be. You come out there looking like huevos rancheros. Okay, let's start the party, boys. Prepare the oxier chamber for activation. Negative. Entry denied. Shit. Please identify right. patients in chamber. This machine has multiple access codes. Figure it out. Please insert patient's DNA disc. I'll need the pass key. Can not proceed. Damn. Please identify patient. I repeat. Please pick up. It's me. I haven't turned in yet. I, I'm sorry. Please pick up, Jen. I just called to apologize. Give me a call if you feel like talking. You got the doc. Paid in full. Paid in full. Not that I don't trust you, Senator. Huh. I had a good time, but this wasn't it. Jen. I'm sorry, Jen. Son of a bitch! What now, you doing to her? Now, now, good doctor. The little lady's copacetic. She was nervous, so I gave her a little something to settle her down. Medicinal, of course. You make this gizmo fly right, you both walk away. You and I will be friends, and, and we'll all live happily ever after, right? Take a millisecond to weigh your option, because that's all it's going to take. You've got to do this for me. The two of you are worm food. What's it going to be, Dr. Anders? Door number one or door number two? Lab 6 at MedTech. Please state your message at the tone. If this is an emergency, I will pray for you. First message. Rebecca, it's me, Jake. Lockholt's got Jen. I've got to save her and then get back to the real world. I know you think I'm crazy. I'm gonna miss you, Beck. <sighs> oh, shit, Jake! Shit! Building configuration for manual illustrations. Currently checking outside connections. Please prepare for transmittal. Enter location digits or facsimile number now.
What's that? You guys screwed up my program, so I'm just uh, making some corrections with the numeric combinations. Some kind of foreign language? Haven't you ever doodled? Thank you, Dr. Anders. Please stand by for delivery. Transmitting. Have a nice day. might be gone, but the paper pushers just keep pushing on. <sighs> Insurance reports. Some board member wants a tour of the facility. Any, um, anything from my agent? <sighs> Kids, every eight-year-old hacker in town has this fax number. Something to flip on the fridge. Alex, what are we gonna do? I don't even know where to start. We don't know much, do we? The only thing we know is that wherever that chamber is, Jake isn't very far behind it. Or inside of it. We're back to square one. He can't reach us, and we can't reach him. Now that's something. Son of a bitch. All right, Jake. I like the happy face. What's with this numbers, though? It's still so cryptic. Looks like old root 12 up at Junction OCS. WRHSE Warehouse, right? Could that be the old uh, train station? It's desolate, aren't you? Yeah, that's the old train station. Yep. Big, sprawling place. Yeah, we covered over the main road about five years ago, just past the Ottawa River. Nothing out there, though. Nothing around for about 20 miles. What else does it say? 1730? What's this? Uh, OHR. Zero hour. Absolutely not. Do you know the cost of running our trauma copter? Who's going to reimburse us? There is no other way in, Saul. All the roads are snowed in, and life is on the line here. It's up to the police now. We can't get involved. You're one royal asshole. Yeah, you look like a guy that's been sitting on a hemorrhoid donut. Ha! <laughs> Did you watch the door? Wait a minute. I wasn't informed of a transfer today. Uh, this is John Fisher. We're taking him to St. Joseph's, donor heart. You hanging in there, buddy? He's a mute. He's a mess. I thought you said he was a mute. It's a miracle! Excuse me. You got a choice. Fly or die. I think I'll fly. Wait a minute. What? This wasn't in the plan. Shit happens! I'm a writer. I don't do danger. I do it now. Come on, let's go. Okay. Damn it, Foreman.
going to do a sales demonstration with your wife for the good ambassador. No can do, Senator. I don't recall asking. We don't have a formatted disc with her DNA reading, Senator. We have nothing to match to. Besides, the chamber has an unanticipated side effect. <laughs> Big one. I've had enough of your bullshit. You make this thing work or you're dead. You hear me? I'm gonna need some time. You ain't got no time. Welcome to the Deoxir Chamber. I am Dexter, your co-pilot. Please enter your security password to identify yourself. Dangerous stuff is a rush. You're not gonna miss your typewriter? Uh, the trick was putting the neuroparalyzer on the arrows. How long is it gonna be out like that? Oh, about 20, 30 minutes. Then he'll wake up with a hell of a hangover. Sort of a physiological uh, car wreck. <laughs> you got it. Right on time. This is so cool. Shh. Hello, Mr. Garp and Dr. Lubinsky. I've been sent by the purchaser of the unit to send the body to the chamber as a drive -ock. Run. A drive run. A run. A dry run. A little that, a little dry, what's difference? How do I know you've got any clearance? Ah, I have a picture of me and Senator Lockhart and the purchaser of the unit. That's you? Doctor, show please, Mr. Guard, clearance. Timing sucks. I'll work on it. Checking numerical series. Please insert patient's DNA disc. I Showtime, Mr. Ambassador. DNA disc. Please identify patient in chamber. Is no funny stuff. Alex! Oh my god! I told you! I don't do danger. Shh. I don't do death. He's dead. Why don't you join him?
think so. Nice to see you again, Dr. Anders. Thanks, Dexter. It's good to be back. Unable to reconfigure patient's DNA unless disc is inserted. Please insert disc. Thank you. Patient identified as Dr. Jake Anders. Program will configure to disc components only. Please stand by. Good to see you, Alex. Beck said you were dead. Disc information contains damage. Good to see organs. you too, Doctor. Please insert healthy You know what they say? Always get a second opinion, eh? Random code. Do you wish to override? Overriding program. Prepare for matching. Reversing patient's condition. Matching to Dr. Jake Hander's DNA disc. Matching. Alert. Damaged organs on disc. This will not be pretty. Multiple punctures to internal and external human structure. Replacing healthy internal organs. Reversing skeletal structure. Open all internal external punctures. Rib cage destroyed. Kidney dysfunctional. Cybergenetic operation near completion. Irreparable damage. Irreparable damage. Irreparable damage. Irreparable damage. Irreparable damage. Irreparable damage. You're gonna be okay. Uh, looks like, uh, summer, in the middle of summer. Interesting change, huh? Looks like it's gonna be a nice day. I predict an early thaw. Our friend the Senator has brought us a new forecast. It was either him or you. We'll just have to walk. Hey, Alex. Yes, Dr. Anders. How did you know that all this time that I caused the breach? I mean, not you by stepping into this mirror. Lucky guess? How about I put you through a mirror without sending you into another world, Alex? <laughs> Break it up, guys. Come on, let's just go to the beach. I'll bring the suntan lotion. Just bring yourself, babe. <laughs> One, two, three. Patient recognition, Dr. Jake Anders. Jake Anders, propelled into alternate universe. Do you wish random completion? When I look in the mirror, what do you think I see? Is it just a reflection of the thing that I want to be? There's a hundred thousand questions.
Welcome to the Deoxier Chamber. I am Dexter, your co-pilot. DNA disc. Please seal chamber and step away from the vehicle. Cybergenetic operation near completion. Scanning for minor instabilities. I knew it was not you in the chamber, Dr. Anders. I hope he was a politician. One more time. Let us try again, shall we? Recalling information. Re-enact program performance. Please try again. Artificial intelligence has come to a conclusion. I think you need a vacation. Anatomy disassembled. Anatomy reassembled. Have a nice day.